In the last video, we looked at the mechanism of the reaction between hydroxide ions as a nucleophile. And now we're going to look at the same molecule, a bromoalkane. Again, R representing the rest of the molecule. And the bromine is attached to this primary haloalkane directly to the carbon. The only difference in this case is the nucleophile is, instead of being a negatively charged anion, is a neutral molecule. However, it's a nucleophile because it possesses a lone pair of electrons that can attack this electron deficient carbon atom here. And again, this dipole is very slight, but as the lone pair of electrons approaches the electron deficient carbon, the dipole, the dipole will increase as the, the electrons between the carbon and the bromine are repelled onto the bromine. So again, here we have our curly arrow showing the movement of the pair of electrons from the nucleophile to the electron deficient carbon, forming a new covalent bond. Simultaneously, the electrons uh, that are holding together this carbon atom and this bromine atom will be shifted onto the bromine until eventually it breaks and that's represented by with a curly arrow moving from the middle of the bond onto the bromine. Again notice that the arrows are always flowing in the same direction. Now in this case the ammonia molecule is behaving as a nucleophile. And notice in this first step there is no overall net charge. The bromine, again, is the leaving group, and the nitrogen will form a bond with the carbon. So if we now look at the intermediate species, the nitrogen now has four bonds, as it would in ammonium ion, and there's our dative covalent bond, and therefore it now acquires a positive charge and the bromine has left with a pair of electrons one belonging to the carbon so that has a negative charge notice on this side there is no overall net charge they cancel each other out so the mechanism isn't yet complete because if we have an excess of ammonia molecules in the mixture another ammonia molecule will come along and this time instead of behaving as a nucleophile it will behave as a base a Bronsted-Lowry base because it has a lone pair of electrons which will accept a proton so it could take any of these protons from around the nitrogen if we have it moving this proton here forming a bond with that proton then this bond again must break remembering that all arrows must go in the same direction so if this the electrons are mo moving to this hydrogen here therefore this bond must break and the curly arrow must move in to the nitrogen so the pair of electrons that were shared between the nitrogen and the hydrogen have now moved onto the nitrogen so here the ammonia behaves as a nucleophile and in the second step the ammonia then removed a proton and behaved as a Bronsted-Lowry base. The final species that we arrive at it belongs to the homologous series, the amines. So we now have this functional group here with a lone pair. And this is a primary amine. The ammonia took a extra proton and it's therefore formed an ammonium ion. And the charge of that, remember, don't forget, is cancelled out by the bromide ion. So it forms a salt ammonium bromide. The overall equation for this reaction is the amine, the alkane, the halo alkane. plus ammonia and again it's a simple substitution to form a primary amine so NH2 
and the hydrogen will combine with the bromine here. Now if there's an excess of the ammonia, so we put two of those in there, it will then form NH4 plus ammonium bromide Br minus.